Hi! This is the third video of chapter 1, Perfect Competition. In this video we will see how much quantity of product will be produced in the short run. So, in this slide we see the graph of the decision for a particular firm. We have the price as a horizontal line which is at $40 and then we know that the firm is the price taker. We also have the marginal cost, which is here, the red line, the average total cost, which is this deep blue line, and then we have the average variable cost, which is the light blue line. Okay, then we know that the price equals to the average revenue and to the marginal revenue, this horizontal line as we explained in the last video. In the last video, we also explained that to maximize the profits, the first order condition that has to be satisfied is that the price equals to the marginal cost. At the price of $40, we see that the marginal cost equals to this price here, where we produce eight units of product. Then what happens if the firm decides to decrease the quantity and produce, for example, 7 units instead of 8? If the firm takes this decision and produces 7 units instead of 8, then the marginal cost, the marginal cost will be under the marginal revenue and under the price. So the firm will have less marginal benefits if instead of producing 7 units, it, it produces 1 unit more. Okay, so we go back to this point. The unit 8 of product will still provide additional benefits, additional marginal benefits. And this is expressed by this orange or yellow area. Okay, so these are the marginal profits that um, I am um, getting if I produce 8 units instead of 7. But what happens if the firm decides to produce 1 unit more and produce 9 units instead of 8? Then the marginal cost is greater than the marginal revenue. Okay, so we are again losing profits which means that this last unit provides more additional cost than additional revenues so the marginal benefits of this last, last unit are negative and this is represented again by this orange or yellow area moreover we we see that we have a third point in this graph which is here that mer our attention and this is the point where the firm produces one unit of product at this point we see that the price also equals to the marginal cost okay so are we maximizing profits here well at this point the price equals to the marginal cost so it satisfies the first order condition but how do we know if this point maximizes the profits or not well, at this point, we see that the marginal cost coincides with the marginal revenue. The slope of the total cost function is equal to the slope of the total revenue function. Then, it means that we are maximizing the losses. And this is called the second order condition. To maximize the profits, the slope of the marginal cost must be positive or what is the same, the derivative of the marginal cost must be positive. In the profits function, in the profit function we will be here. So here the losses are maximum. Yeah, we don't have a maximum profits. So again, to maximize the profits we need to have two conditions first the price must equal to the marginal cost 
And second, the slope of the marginal cost must be positive and not negative. In this situation, we should also pay attention to the fact that the average total cost, the average total cost is under the average revenues here. We see that the average total cost is under the average revenue. So it means that in this graph, we are having more revenues than costs when we produce eight units. So when we produce eight units, we will have positive profits because the total cost, average total cost is under average revenue. And the profits will be given by the difference between this average total cost and average revenue, which is the area A, B, C, D, this area. So there will be different possibilities regarding the profits. The first case is when we have positive profits, as we have just explained. If we have positive profits, when the price equal to the marginal cost, here at this point, Q star, then the firm will keep producing, as it will be covering all the cost and getting some more extra money. The case B happens when the point where the price equals to the marginal cost coincides with the average total cost. So this point where we have Q star, the marginal cost equals to the price, and this point coincides with the average total cost. Okay, then the average revenue equals to the average cost, and we have zero profits. In this case, we say that the firm will still produce if we are in the short run, as it is covering all its, its costs. By the way, in the short run, it is usual not to be able to have positive profits, as the first weeks or months after beginning a new business are tough, and we will probably have many expenses to cover. However, the firm will keep producing, as it is covering all its costs in this case. So when we have zero profits, in the short run, we will keep producing. And this is called the break-even point. So we have case C. It happens when the point where the price equals to the marginal cost is below the average total cost, but over the average variable cost. It means that we are covering all our variable cost and some of our fixed costs, but not all of them. Then the firm will keep producing at least as it will be covering all the variable costs. The company will probably be expected to cover all the costs in the long term and the losses equals to the area a, B, C, D, because this is the difference between the average cost and the average revenue. So the firm will stay, it will keep producing. Then we have case D, where the point where the price equals to the marginal cost here coincides exactly with the average variable cost then we will not be able to cover any of the fixed costs, but at least we will be covering the, all the variable costs, which in the short run is enough to keep producing. So in this case, the losses equals to the fixed cost. It will be CBEF. And this point, this point is called the shutdown point as it is the point where the firm will decide to stop producing. Therefore, exactly at this point, the company will be indifferent between producing or not, because it will be covering at least all the variable cost, but then it can also decide not to produce anymore. So going back, to summarize all this, we see first 
our initial case where we had the positive profits in Q star, if you remember, this slide is more or less similar to the first one, we are showing the same situation. Then here we have positive profits at this point in Q star because the average total cost is under the average revenue. So we are having positive profits. But what happened in Q0? In Q0, the average variable cost is over. It will be around here. It's over the average revenue. Then the firm is not going to produce at this point Q0 as it will incur in losses and will not cover the variable costs. Then to finish, the equilibrium conditions of the competitive firms in the short run are that the price must be equal to the marginal cost and greater or equal to the average variable cost. And the shutdown rule says that the firm should shut down if the price of the product is less than the average variable cost of production at the profit maximizing output. And that's all for this video. See you in the next one.